everybody welcome back to the channel got a budget friendly solar charge controller today from isun new energy is the actual name of it i bought this one uh off of amazon the other day we want to put it through its paces and see how it works it's a little 20 amp controller it's going to use a little portable controller to charge batteries or maybe even put it permanently on my agm bank to keep them topped off things like that but uh at the time when i bought it it was 35 bucks so i couldn't pass up the deal it seems to be a decent controller so let's take a look at it What's in the box here? It's supposed to be highly, it's got good reviews on it, good price. So, packaged well, got nice foam around it. So, what else it comes with here? We got mounting screws, we have a user manual, and what is this right here? I oh, said so we got a little mounting template so you can uh, go ahead and put your, your screws in the right spot so you can hang it on the wall. That's pretty nice. So this is the iSun New Energy GM-D20 model, the 20 amp model of course, got a 50 volt open circuit, max input on your PV, this one do 12 or 24 volts, and like I said, when I bought it, I paid 35 bucks for it, so I figured 35 bucks for a 20 amp controller, why not give it a gamble, right? I've seen this controller branded in several different ways, you may see it in a green color with green buttons or various other things. And to the best of my knowledge, iSun New Energy is the actual manufacturer that makes this controller for the branding company. So if you see something very similar to this with a different name or different color, as long, you know, this is, this is iSun New Energy. iSun New Energy makes different controllers for different brands. It's got a very nice manual, very grammatically correct, very good English in this manual. So that can tell you a lot from, you know, a company when you start looking into their manuals. If they took the time to make it correct, you know, usually you have a little bit better of a product if they spent the time to uh, to get everything lined up for you. Very easy to follow. Multiple functions on this. All kinds of nice features in this little cheap controller. So I figured we'd put it to the test. Controller has nice full-size terminals. It was set up to 10-gauge wire. It's got two USB ports. It's got current limiting protections on it. Uh, high voltage protections, you know, reverse polarity connections, all the things you could, you know, be looking for in a more expensive model, but this one, you know, is, is very affordable. It's got short circuit protection, all kinds of different things. It's got over temperature protection, so all the features that you're, that you're looking for and, you know, just a, a budget friendly model. Cheaper than a couple of, couple of lunches at the pizza joint while you're at work, you can have your nice 20 amp charge controller, so... You know, take your bag lunch for a couple of days and you can afford this controller and start charging your batteries with the sun. What really drew my attention to this model too, besides the price and the good reviews on Amazon, is it's got a zero volt lithium wake up function. So if you have your lithium battery is dead, it's got the means in here to wake up a dead lithium battery, to bring it back to life to reactivate the BMS in it. So yeah, that's a nice feature to have too. And of course it's maximum PowerPoint tracking and they're claiming 98% total pass-through efficiency. So, you know, that's pretty good. It's got all the safety protections of your expensive controllers in it for a budget price. Capability of charging multiple types of batteries, which is good. So, you know, all kinds of, all kinds of options in a budget-friendly price. So you can get a little start doing some solar projects and not have to go spend $400 on an Outback or a midnight charge controller, just something like this to get you started. So time to test this controller. Here's the setup. The sun is coming in out of clouds. So I can't get a consistent reading that way. So I'm going to be using a DC power supply to feed the source or PV input. And then I've got an energy meter for the load or output side going to the battery. I just got to set a quick lead set up right here with the Anderson connectors for quick connects. There's no circuit protection in here. Now, of course, if you're putting this in permanently, you would apply circuit protection to both the source and the load. But since this is just an experiment, I'm right here with it. Just test this controller. I'm not putting circuit protection in it just because it's a test. And just like any other charge controller, you wanna put your battery connection on first before your PV, so your controller knows its reference point, how to work, this one's an auto ranging 12 or 24. So we'll plug it in, get a reading off the battery. Hopefully you can see that pretty good. 13.1 volts on the battery. And then the energy meter is showing 13.29. So to set this controller up, get you a little better shot right here. You hold the set button for five seconds. It'll bring into the user display and you got your battery selection right here. So you just can scroll up or down, whatever you want. Uh, put it on lithium and this controller on lithium. 
it maintains a 13.8 volt float voltage. So I'm gonna set it there and leave the float voltage as is for today's test. So you can go through, and this is for the load terminals, these voltages. I'm not using any load terminals, but this is your recovery voltage to re-energize the load terminals right there. And that's your low voltage disconnect that was shown right there to disconnect from the load. So that you can power DC loads with this controller as well. I'm not using it for that, but just so you know. All right, so now time to hook up our PV, which today, like I said, I'm using a DC power supply. It is set to 49.5 volts. This is a maximum of 50 volts. So I'm pushing it right at the limit and see what it's made of. So I'm gonna plug it in right here. You'll hear probably a little pop where it loads it up, but there we go, loading it up. I'll give it a few seconds to track and see what it can do. Good, it's co-witnessing the 49.5 volts right there. I'll zoom you in. Let it track, because it's maximum power point tracking, of course. 20 amps. Wow, it's pushing. It's actually doing it. Nice. 20 amps. Bouncing back towards between 19 and 20. Let's see what the little energy meter is showing us right here. Energy meter is showing 20 amps. 20.4 and 21 amps. So it's rocking. It is rocking. Got a nice little temperature display here. It's got an internal temperature meter. So it tells you how hot the controller is. Also has a nice heat sink in the back. I don't know if I mentioned that or not, but uh, we'll see how hot it gets over the course of charging this battery up a little bit. And showing our PV input at 49.2 volts. Let's get a little amp reading. It's showing 5.8, 5.9 amps. So let's see exactly what it's getting with the Klein on the PV input right here. See how close it really is. 6.1 on the Klein. And it's putting over, it's rating in there. It's putting in almost 300 watts, uh, 21 amps. So I've got it maxed out. Everything's working. It's still cold to the touch. We have brought the internal temperature up a smidge. All the wires are cool. No issues there. So yeah, it's charging. Doing everything it's supposed to do. Cooling thing come on on the power supply. So I pushed it over its amperage for several minutes now. Still pushing over its amperage, close to 300 watts going in at times when it's tracking. So I'm uh, doing well. I am going to turn the voltage down now. I wanted to test it at its max. So we're right down to about 40 volts now and see what it can do at 40 volts, see how it tracks there. It's going to retrack, refigure itself out. So I'll give it just a minute and I'll see what it does next. All right, it's starting to track again at the new voltage. So it detected the new voltage and it's tracking just like it should. Now just a few seconds and it started tracking. Five, six amps on the input side, seven amps, 7.4. Yeah, so brought the voltage down, the amperage went up, We're pushing 20 amps in the battery, even at the lower voltage. Excellent, excellent, excellent. What are we pushing in? 285 watts, 20 amps. So let me take the meter off the PV side. Let's put it on the battery side, see what it's doing. 20.98. Very good, very, very good. Put the power supply right at 30 volts because it's an 8 amp power supply. Uh, 8 times 3 is 24, so we should get 240 watts on the nose this time. Alright, it's tracking at the 30 volts, 29.9, 29.24 coming in there where it's tracking. So, what are we at? Right at its 240 watt rating. Excellent. Very nice simulation of 240 watts worth of PV. Nice, 17 amps into the battery. Very good. I like this little controller. So yeah, overall, decent little controller, especially for 30 some odd dollars. I'll have a link in the description for this and everything else you've seen here today if you're interested in looking into it further, but I'm gonna test it some more, but so far, first impressions, yeah, I like it. I don't feel like I've wasted my money on this one. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank y'all for watching. Y'all take care and be safe.